Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Dakota and today we are out here in the woods. Now today's topic is going to be something that is near and dear to my heart. And I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible because I know that I can drone on with information and it gets hard to watch. So I will try to inform you all of what I am aware of and what I know works and why in this video about wool blankets and bedrolls. Okay. Now, you're probably wondering why this is something you're watching. So the wool blanket kind of has this love-hate relationship with all these forums of the bushcrafters and the outdoorsmen and the packers and the cowboy guys and the uh, the hunters and the fishermen. And then you've got the ultralight backpackers that say this is the stupidest thing on planet Earth. Then you've got certain big influencers that say, uh, you know, these things suck. And it's because the wool blanket is thrust into this fantasy world that it doesn't belong in, okay? And uh, you're probably wondering why should I listen to some dodo out in the middle of the Alabama heat talking about wool blankets, right? Well, hear me out, okay? As a kid, I've done living history for a very long time. I've spent a lot of summer nights under this particular blanket. I've spent a lot of winter nights under this particular blanket, and I've spent a lot of time in every climate in between that has been available to me, short of extreme cold. I have not spent extreme cold under this because I individually am not stupid enough to do so. If you have been put in that predicament, I hope it was not by choice, and I'm not trying to call you stupid. But I do want to state that that was a dumb decision to make, and that's because wool is getting this mantra that it is either useless or infinitely capable. We're going to end that here today and we're going to talk serious information about that wool. Okay, A hundred percent wool, depending on the way that it is woven, makes a big difference. Okay, This right here is a, I'm going to say it's a mid, it's not very tightly woven, but it's also not very loosely woven, so it's kind of in between a very tight weave and a very loose fluffy weave okay it's also not extremely lofty this is designed for you to have something to wrap up in in conjunction with a sleep system that the military used to give out okay this is designed to also be the municipal blanket so everybody that tells you that this wool blanket is the one you need if you're going to stay cold or stay warm in the 10 degree weather those are the kind of people that are either trying to sell you something or have not done it themselves without a fire and an extremely good shelter, which does not make for a good time. Okay, this blanket, you're trying to thrust this particular blanket into something it's not designed to do, right? So this blanket particular and blankets like it where it's very thin 100% wool or it's 55% wool, these are designed, the 55% particularly are designed for spring weather where it's going to be 60 55 at night and the wind is not terribly bad and there's not a rainstorm coming through that's when you're perfectly fine to sleep with just a wool blanket right and then obviously some sort of bedding below you this is great if you are a cold sleeper and it is early summer where at night it still can get 65 degrees and that do coupled with sitting on the bare ground will suck the heat out of you and you want a little bit of a thermal. That's great. Times like right now, it's 89 degrees in the middle of the day, but at nighttime it hits 65 and your body is, is acclimated to hotter temperatures. So that 65 that's normally kind of warm to most people is actually cold to your body when you're laying on the ground, battling convection, and being acclimated to that heat that was there all day long, okay? That's when this blanket right here, these military reproduction blankets, are good, okay? They're also extremely packable. As you can see, I can roll this guy up, and realistically, I could throw this on my uh, haversack or under, a, you know, under my pack with relative ease, right? So this is easy to carry. Or I could just make a little backpack out of it, throw it on the back, we're good to go, right? Now... This, in conjunction with a few other things, can make it into some colder weather. This is very true, okay? I'm not trying to tell you that that is not the truth, okay? But I can tell you that it is going to be hard-pressed for most individuals to take this into colder weather and be comfortable without so much extra work that it becomes kind of pointless to carry, okay? 
I can take this into 10 degree weather with a big fire and a very well built shelter on a decent night where there is not a lot of wind and be comfortable. This is true. But why would I do that when other products are available for you to use? Okay, let's get into those next, right? If you are looking to go out and sleep inside of a system that will keep you warm, its goal is optimal warmth in colder climates. And to me, colder climates is 32 degrees and below. Okay. So as a reference point when I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about now. We're done covering this guy and we're gonna come back to him for a brief touch going into these at the end of the video. So now the next option you have is something that's a lot bigger. This is a queen size uh, E-Tox 100% wool. I'm gonna leave the name of it right here because this is an amazing blanket. And if you live in the South, this is a four season blanket. If, well, this is a two season blanket. It'll cover you in our coldest months in conjunction with this guy, no problem, okay? Let's get into that. Obviously, there are some caveats, so let's talk about it, okay? This 100% wool here is a lot. It's a massive step up from here. There is a reason why the price range is different. You're getting a lot more blanket, and it is 100% wool. It is a little bit more lofty. And when I say a little bit, I mean like a little bit, like two or three sheets of paper thicker <laughs> but it's noticeable and that makes a huge difference when you're talking about wool okay which means it's still very packable I'm gonna go ahead and roll this guy up we'll look at them side by side and you'll see the loft difference we well, won't really necessarily see the loft difference but you'll see the packability and then I'll throw these guys out so that you can see the the size difference as to what we're talking about so there you go that's your size difference right there okay not very much but this is going to make a massive difference to you. One, it has, again, it's 100% wool. Two, it's also bigger, so there's more product for you to wrap around yourself, which means you get two layers, okay? Now, we're gonna touch base on that as well here in a moment before we move on, but I wanna finish talking about this particular type, okay? This blanket is tight woven. It's not very fluffy and loose, which means that this type of wool blanket in conjunction with a second wool blanket or a thick fluffy wool blanket can take you down into some very cold weathers, okay? Like that 32 to 10 degrees, comfortably, without the need of a fire. That's what we're looking for, we're looking to smooth it. If I have to get up every hour and rebuild a fire, I'm doing something wrong as a woodsman. And that's just, a, that's a hard fact for people to follow, but it's the truth. Okay, if you're in 20 degree weather, 30 degree weather, and you're feeding a fire all night long, your sleep system is failing you. 80% of your heat retention should come from your sleep system, and the other 10% should come from your clothing. The fire should be something that cuts that little bit of an edge off when it hits peak at nighttime, if you need it. It shouldn't be a requirement for you to even get to sleep in the first place. At that point, you failed. Okay, or you're in extreme cold, that's different. Okay, but for 90% of the year and 90% of the people watching, that 30 degrees, that 19, that 10 degrees is about as cold as we're gonna get. Okay, and if you do have colder stuff, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Okay, now I do again, I want to state before I move forward with that, there are some caveats to everything that I say in this due to the fact that not every camp out and not every climate is the same. Here in the South versus the Midwest, massive difference. Versus the European front versus the Middle East. All those places have different acclimated clients, or climates with different people that are acclimating to that climate differently. So understand that this is a broad range spectrum, but I'm trying to put some ease of mind to those of you who are confused about these blankets, right? Now, back to the blanket because I keep going off on a tangent. This is an amazing self standalone blanket in late fall, early winter. If you want to be even more warm, you go ahead and grab this guy here, right? And you pair those guys together and now you have a lot more loft. So you would use this guy as a wind cutting blanket over the top of you and you'd use this guy as a burrito wrap, okay? 
that's going to start getting a little bit heavy because these two guys right here are about 12 pounds together okay it also helps those of you who are getting into the woods for the first time just a fun fact while we before we get into this these wool blankets are heavy and they do act as sort of a mild heat like a mildly honest to god it's kind of like a uh a weighted blanket it'll it'll snuggle you if you lay in them right if you don't turn yourself into a tight wrap taco like i see a lot of people do you will be quite comfortable okay um there are instances where that tight wrap taco is important and we'll talk about that in another video but nine times out of ten you should be able to get away with your sleep system being able to just keep you warm okay now the next piece we're going to talk about is that expensive blanket okay this right here this was seventy dollars the guy below him forty dollars seventy dollars is going to take you a long way here in the south and if you know how to sleep in that blanket it take you even further but that's when you do need a fire okay all that to be said when it's time to break out this guy right here it's cold it is no longer kind of chilly it's cold outside okay it is hey man tonight's gonna be 10 15 degrees or I don't want to carry all these guys I want one blanket and it's gonna be 30 degrees this right here standalone is gonna take you to about 20 degrees if you sleep in optimal conditions okay now this guy right here is 225 bucks I got this from OPSG products and uh, for those of you who have Blackie Thomas's old uh, run of wool blankets they are the exact same this one is the same manufacturer just different colors doesn't have Blackie's name on it. so you already have one of these if you if you have what I'm talking about now this guy here as you can probably see is real smushy okay this guy has a lot of loft and you will be able to go into very cold climates with this blanket okay now I do also want to make another statement when it comes to this okay you have to understand that the colder you sleep the better you have to dress 30 40 degrees you can get away with just some regular clothing that you want to wear tomorrow morning after 30 degrees you need to start thinking about merino base layers or fleece base layers something that will allow you to wick moisture and then have the system rick it the rest of the way off of you while still retaining at least 90 percent of its heat okay now this big blanket is very very costly and it costs about the same amount as a used military sleep system it's also a lot heavier than a military sleep system and it's also a lot harder to pack than a military sleep system and I would highly recommend that you spend good money at minimum one of these big skies bed rolls or a bedroll of some type some kind of canvas cloth or some kind of canvas or something oil cloth I don't care to protect these blankets from the elements and from you know abrasion from the atmosphere from the environment around them okay because these things can get tore up and they're very hard to repair and they're very hard to maintain so you're probably wondering why wouldn't you just go with the ESS sleep system well this right here is what I would carry into an extremely cold weather outing I want to talk to you about something that's gonna be pretty cool brought it with me because I spent a lot of time in it this guy here is the summer bag for the MSS sleep system or the ESS sleep system I think it's the MSS could be ESS again I'll leave that right there now from the age of 10 until today I would say I spent more time in this bag right here than I have in any wool blanket that I have in any hammock that I have in any tarp that I have in any like what are those things called tents I don't like I don't like tents that's why I can't remember them. I just this right here has been my house more than in my adult life I've been in my actual house honest to God hiked the Appalachian Trail a lot this was with me through most of the Appalachian Trail uh, summertime I dropped it off of course and use the hammock um, common sense I think say that but just to express 
where it went. <laughs> and I will tell you that in the colder months, you throw that bad boy in there or a poncho liner, I prefer wool, and you're good to go. Okay? And a lot of people will argue with me on that. But a lot of you who've been in the military can attest to the fact that if you dress right and you get rid of that moist clothing before you go to sleep, this is going to keep you pretty dead on. It's going to keep you good. It's going to keep you pretty freaking warm, man. Um, and it packs away. Mind you, I've got a bedroll. I've got a thick insulating layer. And I've got a cutting layer right here. And it's just as big, if not, and it's also lighter than these guys right here. I've got a whole system, okay? So if you don't want to spend the $200 almost on a Big Skies bedroll or, again, a Helco Work or a Bushcraft Spain, whatever you want to spend your money on, I'm not saying you have to spend money on this. It's just what I have to show you today. And you don't want to spend the $90 here and the $225 here. I mean, these guys alone right here. 225 plus 90 so they we're just gonna throw that at 300 or uh, 300 dollars 450 bucks versus like 110 bucks and this is lighter and you can waterproof this and sleep in it i am not telling you that this is the only way to do things i'm telling you this is an amazing way to camp and if you're going to camp this way you need to heed what i'm telling you about this stuff okay this is an introductory there's so much i want to go into and I'm trying to keep this video under 30 minutes, so understand that it's kind of choppy because there's just a lot to talk about. And a lot of people are going to give me a lot of hate on this, and so you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, big dog, I challenge you to make a video contradicting what I just said. Because that stuff's going to get people killed one day, and it's going to be your fault. Alright? I have nothing to sell you here. Um... I do like OPSG products. I do like Big Skies. They've made a pretty good bedroll here. But I also love Sportsman's Guide. And I also love my friends and family who went out and bought this for me when I was a child from some military men that were moving. And it has literally been my home on most occasions. Okay? So I want you all to understand what I'm trying to get to you is that wool blankets have purposes. And those purposes are not endless. You got to look at what you're doing and look at what you're purchasing and make sure that those two things, like a relationship after high school, are not going in the right, are not going in different directions. Okay, if you need something that's stupidly warm, don't go buy a forty dollar friggin' like little cheapo wool blanket and then have nothing to sleep on. They're just going to get you hurt, okay? Now, if you want to do something like that, well, i got one more thing for you. This guy right here, military surplus, okay? This is just a sleep pad. It is an inflatable sleep pad, and someone's going to freak out and scream in bloody murder. But let me introduce you to something really cool that the military did they realized that while they're providing comfort for these soldiers and Marines in the field and sailors, that they needed to also make this thing functional under any circumstances. This is foam in here. This foam is going to give you enough insulation to get you through a decently cold night, like 30 degrees, okay? Obviously, in the field, if you need something to enhance this thing's capabilities, you could quite easily put some brows under you or put a moisture barrier so that you're only battling physical temperature and you're not battling moisture. Okay? Just food for thought. All right? You can get any type of sleep pad that you want. All right? Now that you've listened to my rambles and me go all over the place about these, okay, you can get any type of bedroll system that you want. You are not wrong for sleeping in this. Everybody that's been preaching the, well, a real bushcrafter uses wool. Most individuals that spend a lot of time incorporate wool into their sleep system. But I will tell you that some of the most effective people in the woods I've ever met sleep out of those. 
just like the most effective people you see in bushcraft sleep out of these, the folks that are off the camera and that are doing the work every single weekend, they're using stuff like this too. Don't ever feel like you have to get this. And my, my point being, guys, is if y'all and girls, is if y'all are going to get into this stuff, I want you to look at what you're purchasing. I want you to take a look at this video and the topic discussion that I brought up in there. And I want you to ask yourself, is this wool blanket doing the part or the parts that I need it to do? Or am I purchasing this because somebody said that I ain't a bushcrafter without wool? And then I need you to stop and ask yourself before you purchase anything ever. Is the stuff I have today actually outdated and not doing what I need it to do? Or am I telling myself that because Dakota in the woods said buy wool? Think about that. Think about if your favorite YouTuber is making you buy something you really don't need. Okay? Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps. We're going to be doing a lot more in-depth on specific for the bedroll, specifics, or specifics for the traditional style gear and specifics for the more modern stuff and the last thing I want to say before we leave is when somebody says that something is traditional I need you to get this through y'all's head too I am not doing the bedroll and the wool because it's old timey I'm doing it because I like the way it helps me sleep in the woods and I'll be the first to tell you that nine times out of ten this guy right here is in my bedroll and I don't care who that aggravates because it ain't traditional and I'm not trying to reenact anything. I'm real. Okay, and you got to be real with yourself in the woods too. I've got, like I said, in here, I've got that wool blanket and I've got that, that MSS sleep system. Don't be afraid to do the thing the right way and get the best night's sleep you ever had in the woods, all right? Remember, guys, traditional does not always have to mean that you got to follow tradition. It just means that you're using older style gear and you're using older style methods. It does not mean that you have to make every single portion in that piece of kit up to date with 1810. That's not real. That's not practical anymore. And there's a reason why this crap has been created. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.